going to spend a few minutes talking about curtain walls and curtain wall doors. So for example, I have a curtain wall panel family here. This is called the uh, curtain wall one. So curtain wall. This is curtain wall exterior glazing. These are right out of the stock imperial template. And then we have storefront. Fundamentally, they're the same, uh, same basic family, except that they each have different uh, settings. So the storefront has the most settings in advance. I call I call curtain wall one the dumbest. This is slightly smarter, and then this is slightly smarter still. So this would be Larry and his other brother Daryl, if you think about the Bob Newhart show of, of past. Um, Functionally, this one's more flexible because it's up to us to do all of the carving, so to speak, to cut it up into different panels. And if I were going to do that now, I would use a curtain grid. And when I place something on the horizontal at the base, at the top, I get verticals. If I place something on the verticals, then I get something across the horizontal. <coughs> now, the difference between this one and this one is that there's already a pattern. And when I look at the type of properties, I see that it's got a 6x12 grid defined. So storefront is really the same, except that in addition to having a pattern assigned, it has a, a specific panel assigned to it. It has this automatically embed feature enabled. It has a 5-foot spacing and an 8-foot spacing, as well as some presets regarding mullions. So the tricky part about curtain walls in general is that when people think they want to put doors into the project, they find that the door tool is a little uh, unfulfilling. The trick to getting a door into a curtain wall is you have to swap out a panel. So in this case I'm going to hover next to the bottom of this spot here. I'm going to click when I see my panel highlighted and then I'm going to use the type selector to choose from a curtain wall type, door type that I've already loaded. So there's a storefront double door listed here. That's the nicer looking of the bunch. So now it's added that. Now the tricky part about this when we look at the say the north elevation is that the mullions, as soon as I were to adjust this, so right now it's a clean 6 by 9, so if I say that should be 7, now I've got a 7 by 9, or rather 7 by uh, 6 door. Problem is, as soon as I add mullions to this, you'll see that the panel gets a little smaller. And if I measure this, you'll see that the panel's a bit smaller still. So each of these has to be adjusted to accommodate that uh, extra thickness of mullion. So now if I grab my grid, I can add half of the thickness of a mullion to one side and half of the thickness to a mullion at the other side. Now the only reason I'm doing that is that I was interested in keeping the door centered. If I wasn't concerned with that, then I wouldn't bother to switch and put a little bit on each side. And then this would need to increase by half of a million as well. So that if I measure it again, it'll be six across and then seven down. The tricky part there is you've got to do that for uh, each condition. So one of the things you can do with a million is you can set up the million so that it has an offset built in. And currently the offset is on either side of the grid line. If you've shifted all the way over to one side, then you'd have a left or right justified million. And then you could use the left or right justified millions at a panel's location. Now this one has a pattern assigned already. I can't move this grid without unpinning it first. So the idea is that you could get a, a regular sort of pattern defined easily and then punch in where additional grids would need to go so that you could then swap out a panel. Now this one doesn't have a preset panel, so this one can also be exchanged without having to unpin it. If I go over to this one, on the other hand, if I tab and grab this panel, you'll find that it's got a push pin. This panel is assigned. It's supposed to be there. If I click on the push pin, however, I can unpin it, and then I could swap it out for a double door instead. The only problem I have now is that I've got a mullion lurking at the bottom, which is also pinned, which needs to be removed. Now the beauty of that is that it's fairly easy, but I still have to reconcile the fact that this pattern is set to 5 foot. The only way I can break this pattern is by unpinning the grid and shifting things around. So when you're designing these curtain wall, curtain wall systems, you have to take into account what your uh, intentions are. Uh, i go back to the plan view for a moment. So there's a door, there's a door, and there's a door. 
You'll notice it says it's a doors category. So even though it's not really a door in the type that you can get to with a door tool, Revit's still regarding it as a door, which means it'll be affected by visibility graphics in the same way that other doors would be. And if you use a schedule, those doors will schedule along with other doors. The only the wrinkle there is, of course, that they're not doors when it comes to loading them into the project, and they're not doors when you're trying to interact with them and use them with a door tool and trying to put them into your curtain walls. All right, so I call that a Revit heuristic when Revit does something because it does it because of the way Revit does it, not necessarily the way we would think it would uh, work based on our own intuition. <laughs> Hope it helps.